All right, we've been through position tolerancing, the modifiers, and now we're going to take you all the way back to the beginning on the whole bar again. And now we're going to talk about qualifying the datum features and introduction to profile tolerancing. So remember how the assembly looked for this piece. Pretty simple assembly. The part mounted up against the back face. It aligned to that bottom edge and aligned to that side edge, screwed in place with two screws. And this hole was designed to clear this blue pin. We talked about how plus minus tolerancing can be confusing, that when we talk about 3D variations, it can be hard to index the part. How do you know how to index the part in a unique way? And that's where the datum features come in. You're going to contact A on three points, B on two points, and C on one point. That's the only way you can handle this blob of an imperfect part. I want to remind you of two concepts again, the term datum versus datum feature. Datum is a theoretically perfect plane. The datum feature is the real physical surface. So when I label this surface as a datum feature, in theory, I'm going to bring a plane to the highest points and measure off of that. But we still don't know how rough and wavy that surface is. So that's why we want to qualify the datum feature. So what symbol would we put on A to make sure it's a nice surface? Probably said flatness tolerance. Flatness is pretty simple. Two parallel planes, five thousandths apart. And that's going to control the concave, convex, and waviness variations on that surface. Another thing to note, if we zoom in here a little bit, notice how the datum is contacting on the highest points. And the datum feature is this ugly looking surface. All the variation is to the inside of the datum. Datum contacts high points, so the flatness is really affecting those low points on there. Make sure they don't get too far away. So we've talked about flatness in some of the other sections. Next one I want to talk about is B. Now remember, there's two things here. Datum B, which is the perfect plane, and datum feature B, which is the ugly looking surface. So if you zoom in here again, you can see the feature B, which is a little bit crooked, but datum B is going to be perfectly perpendicular. So we need to qualify that datum feature to make sure it's not too crooked. What symbol would we put on B to relate to A? That would be perpendicularity. So perpendicular within five thousandths of an inch is what I selected relative to A. Now what is the shape of the tolerance zone? Remember when no diameter symbol is in the feature control frame, what is the shape of the tolerance zone? Two parallel planes. So that means the tolerance zone for the perpendicularity is two parallel planes perfectly perpendicular to A. And that's going to control the variation in tilt relative to our A datum. I'm really emphasizing two parallel planes because a common mistake is people think it's like an angular zone, like plus or minus degrees. It is not in degrees units, it's in distance units. The distance between the two parallel planes is five thousandths of an inch. When you put a perpendicularity on a surface within five thou, that's also going to control the flatness within five thou. Datum feature C is the next one, and we need to relate it to both A and B. So in this case, we want to control perpendicularity in two directions, relative to your A plane and relative to your B plane. So that's why you're going to have a perpendicularity within some value. Here I pick five thousandths relative to both A and B. So again, two parallel planes, the distance between them is five, and that's going to control the variation on here. This is called qualifying your datum features. Datums are perfect. Datums are always perfect. They're theoretical. But the features are not perfect. So that's why we put flatness and perpendicularity. And notice the order here. A is flatness to itself. B is perpendicular relative to A and C is perpendicular to A and B. So every time you add in a new feature B, then you relate back to the other one A. When you add in a new feature C, you relate it back to A and B. I equate it to like when you build a house. What's the first thing you, when you do when you build a house? You grade the ground, make sure you have a flat foundation. Then you put up the first wall. Well, that wall has to be perpendicular to the foundation. Now when you put up the second wall, that wall has to be perpendicular to the foundation and perpendicular to the first wall you put in. Now you're ready to build everything off of that. Well, let's talk about a basic inspection procedure for perpendicularity. So we'd bring the part up to our datum features. This is A, this is B, and we have our gauge block over here for C. Now with the light clamp, we would hold it in place, and now we can rotate the part to get access. Now we're going to bring it underneath our indicator here, and then we're going to zero it out. Now as we traverse this surface here, we're going to watch that TIR the total indicator reading and make sure it's less than our perpendicularity tolerance. Now when I traverse across that entire surface, notice how that's going to create a tolerance zone of two parallel planes. The datum is the high points and it's controlling how much that surface could be tilted down away from those high points. All right, now how will we measure this C feature? Easy, we would just rotate 90 degrees on our angle plate, keep it clamped, and now our part we can measure with the indicator. 
Our datum is the high points and that indicator would traverse across the entirety of that surface and check to see if it's perpendicular in this direction and also perpendicular in this direction. Notice how that dial indicator is also checking the flatness talents on that surface. When you check the perpendicularity, you also control the flatness, all with that indicator measurement.